Good morning, good morning, Penn Global News, Thursday uh, morning, golly, Thursday, I was going to say Thursday afternoon, but good morning, uh, listening audience and viewers, uh, we're back, we missed last week, but we're back today, we're fresh, good morning, my partner, Jesse McRae. Good morning, sir, good how morning. are you? I'm good, man, I'm good, I'm good, feeling good. Oh, yeah. You know, we, somebody got the memo, uh, you know, Rick True in the house yeah, this he morning, is right? In the thank house. You thank you for that invitation. <laughs> Yeah, you're it welcome, was, Rick. Great to be here. I it's didn't good notice to see you were in donuts, Nicaragua so. just like a couple of days ago, right? Yeah, I'm doing business in Nicaragua, providing some um, outsourced CFO services for a client. Okay. In Houston. Notice yeah, awesome. that he says Nicaragua. Oh, yeah. With the, yeah, with he the made tongue the rolling. Like, he did. Yeah, he my, did. He did. My, I did take a little Spanish at, down at LSU. Go Tigers. Oh, here we go with this <laughs> LSU yeah. stuff. I didn't think we were going to bring sports into this, but that's fine. Uh, that's I mean, okay. Pink Oak News has I, that dynamic, so I'm I know, sure man. come back around. I'm right. telling you, All Jesse, right. but uh, feeling good this morning, man. We're back in the house at Penn Global News. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Rodney Woods, my partner, Jesse McRae. That would be me, and I'll get to sing at some point today. Oh, no, we're not having no singing today, bro. Well, I, I mean, I've missed being in the studio. I'm, I know. We all miss being in the studio. We had a week off, Jesse, so uh, okay. no okay. singing, man. Okay, I'll, I'll temper we, we my gotta enthusiasm. Keep, uh, we got to keep the flame going with minority businesses. I'll, and... I'll temper my enthusiasm there. Let's go. <laughs> but no, man, it's a pleasure, Rick, having you here in the studio today with us at PN Global News. Rick Trusant. Also, I interim uh, CFO. Absolutely. Congratulations yeah. for that. Yeah, very, 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 very vital part. Glad, glad, glad to have you on the team. Throwing that honor upon me. Oh, man, right. no words, no words. Been knowing Rick for a long time, so Rick tried to teach me a little about, you know, finance back in the day. I was still kind of hard-headed and still trying to learn, why do I really need a, a Rick Trusant CFO? Right, right. <laughs> right? Right. I'm like, I'm a little guy. Why do I need a CFO? Well, you know, it, <laughs> inherently, you, for any entity, you have to have uh, that resource or that um, th that person that can speak to the capital markets, banks, help you with financial planning yeah. and budgeting. So I just think that's critical for any entity to at least even on a fractional basis, you know, be able to go out and tap yeah. that type of uh, business acumen. Yeah, so, I, I've learned a lot, Jesse, because Rick was always kind of in my ear. Sure. Like telling me things I need to do. But uh, moving forward, years progressively yeah. moving forward, we're here now. So yeah. we're trying to really talk about why every minority business or woman owned government, LGBTQ business or majority business, why do businesses need a CFO, a chief financial officer? Critical question, because with, with any entity and, and Rick, I know you know this. And right. again, it is it is uh, exceedingly great to see you again it's, oh, been, it's been it's been 15 years yeah 15 so, and years I know, I know man it's been that long between you two guys yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen yeah. Each other 15 years, 15 years. So i'm bringing i'm really bringing some reunion oh, man, back in the house for, yeah. for, for the past three <laughs> yeah. weeks has all been, been about the reunion <laughs> i know we'll service. talk a little bit about our, our mm -hmm. mutual experiences but when we consider the importance of uh, execution we know that that what begets that is going to be operation capability right and what begets that is going to be the vision of the board Mm -hmm. the CEO, and then the, the, the critical principles at the operating level, uh, the CEO, the COO, and the CFO. <clears throat> but if the CEO is the quarterback, mm -hmm. then the COO and the CFO are they going to be the two backs in the backfield or are they going to be the wideouts? Uh-oh, Jesse's going with a playbook. Okay. Well, well, I'm even – Jesse McGray with I'm, the playbook. I'm even proper. <laughs> your CFO may actually be your left tackle. Could be. For the organization. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. For all the listening audience and the viewing <laughs> audience, we have, you know, chief financial officers and COOs creating uh, playbook plays here on the business side, right? And pun is <laughs> right. intended. Right. Okay? right. It is Very intended. But, so. but, but, but humor aside, when, when we think about the role of the CFO, uh, the conventional wisdom has been that you're bean counters. Right. And, and, and I reject that even, even as a managing partner and COO because uh, having been immersed in the private equity process and having a chance to engage on a very direct level, uh, understanding that there's the critical piece of the reporting right. that a CFO has to do. Of course. There's the execution <laughs> upon that reporting that the COO has to do. But it always seems to come back to the numbers. Right. And, 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 and as a keeper of record, Mm -hmm. as a person that monitors the performance of the past, but keeping things in 4D like we were talking yeah, about and certainly. looking at the future, how important is the CFO to not just looking at the projected metrics, understanding the variance of where we wanted to be versus where we are, but being forward thinking and backing into or trying to forecast 
what we need to do tactically mm-hmm. right. in terms of cost synergies uh, as, we're, as well as top line revenue, which is important to make sure that we're getting to that next place and that we're finding that on a relative basis we're performing better, right. but, but, but as a company that there is more left in the kitty, also known as pure profits. How, how critical is the CFO's role in managing, helping to manage an enterprise through that process? All right, so um, now Jesse that, always gives you long questions. You well, know yeah, right? well, he's, he's somewhat <laughs> verbose, but it, it, the intellect is just. Right. It, I'm honored to be in the. In the, it, the, the answer is obviously very critical. Um, I, the best way for me to answer that question, I'll, I'll kind of draw upon my own experience. So, being an entrepreneur, also being a CPA, and having the I think benefit of starting enterprises, mm-hmm. and then having setbacks and failures but also understanding accounting. What happens for me, and this is why I think a company needs an experienced CFO. Okay. It starts with a budget, and then I need projections. And a good CFO can basically chart tactical decisions, operational decisions, and I can tell you if we're going to meet budget, if we're going to be off, I can tell you why we're going to be off or why we're going to exceed expectations or exceed projections. So you're always analyzing mm-hmm. the variances right? to make sure that we can begin to, to be tactical in, in trying to right the ship. Yeah, because success is, to me, a sum of making the right decisions. And one thing I always try to um, share with business owners, small and mid-sized companies, every decision costs. Every decision counts mm-hmm. one way or another. Um, and I think that's what an enterprise is going to need their CFO to bring. It's not just tax returns. It's not just making sure the books and records are sound. It's gauging the precision and accuracy of tactical operational decisions because they have a financial impact. So you have to be able to interpret what those decisions mean financially. And I think that's what a good CFO does for an organization. And speak a little bit on, on some of those dynamics because you know, we, we can be ambiguous all day, mm-hmm. but, but well, yeah. be a little bit more granular yeah. about that. Well, what are some but of also, more importantly, we, we do play devil's advocate a lot okay. on the okay. show because okay. we want the, the viewership and the listening audience to understand exactly what we're expounding on. So a lot of times we'll ask questions, we'll play devil's advocate a little bit, and then you'll give us the right answers and what we need to know and what they need to know. Okay. So I'll try to walk through an example. So let's say we have a staffing firm. Yeah. And experience teaches me if I have three salespeople, I should be able to generate $3 million a quarter in gross revenue. All right? That's pretty good. That'd be good. That'd be good. That's let's really great. <laughs> that, that's great. That's really You're Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Let's take up just using an example. No, but don't use an example. That's us. All right. That's, <laughs> that's, what, we're gonna, that's, what, that's what we're going to be okay, able to bring to the table. Right. Well, a tactical decision of either hiring an additional salesperson mm-hmm. or not hiring that salesperson, and now we only have two people. So now we're asking two salespeople to generate the same revenue as we've done in the past. Well, experience teaches me that's a chances are that's a mistake. Mm-hmm. So our projections, our, accu- our actual results won't meet favorable projections because we've made a decision to cut costs in sales and marketing okay. by not having that additional person. Okay. So it's making those decisions, and then that allows me to look at the risk or the likelihood you either meet or fail to meet expectations. Okay. So that, that's a very simple example. Yeah. But – that's one. Also, financing. You can look, Jesse and Rodney, uh, if we choose to um, take on equity or if we choose to take on debt. Mm-hmm. Well, if we take on debt, we may own more equity in our entity, but now we've increased our outflow mm-hmm. of capital because we have interest payments. Right. So knowing that. We know about those, right, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, de- debt service, it, it's something else. <laughs> so with that debt service, that now impacts how we hire, who we hire, hire how much we may have to spend on marketing mm-hmm. to make sure we cover that additional cost. Mm-hmm. So those are those decisions that I think a good CFO can tell you, okay, here's the financial impact of making that choice mm-hmm. and what we have to do to overcome, to stay on budget. So, so mm-hmm. let me see if I can ask a shorter question this time. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. right. Short questions, right. J-Mac. Shorter. <laughs> shorter. So... What you're talking about now is variances Mm -hmm. and comparing what we had planned to do versus what we've done. 
Mm-hmm. But if we were to go back a couple of steps and look at where this wonderful little metric called EBITDA starts, mm-hmm. okay, and then what flows through that being cost of goods, right? SGNA, and then top line revenue, how much of the ambition may have created some of that variance? Because it's easy to be overly ambitious with overly ambitious right. with three million dollar revenue projection, right. okay? And, and and the reason I ask that is because as a CFO, there's this thing called probabilities. Exactly. And at some point, those probabilities become less favorable. Sure. So rather than be Monday morning quarterbacked, mm-hmm. okay, how important is it to be a little bit more conservative as it relates to the revenue vertical? identifying some of those cost synergies or projecting some of those cost synergies through cost of goods as it flows through the EBITDA, which is going to be the spigot from which all these other uh, deliverables or metrics will flow. Certainly. All right. So I'm glad you asked that question because that, that I think that's a natural progression to where we started. You have to have reasonable uh, plans, reasonable expectations. What, it, what is that saying? Over deliver, under under promise, over deliver. Can you say that one more time? Under promise. Under promise, (laughs) but over deliver. So many corporations, so many management teams, they get into trouble by promising the sun, the stars, and the moon, and then they don't have a realistic plan to get there. Okay. That's why, again, it's critical to have seasoned experience management in all the C suites. Um, but I think a, a solid CFO with experience can tell you the likelihood and the probability, hey, we can't say this. We can't promise this because we don't have the resources to deliver. It, it's all interconnected. Okay. It's all awesome. interconnected. Awesome. Everything. Yeah. Awesome. So, look, we're here today. Uh, mm-hmm. Rick, and it's a pleasure again having you here today no, with us you. at thank PN you. Global News. Uh, I'm Rodney Woods, my partner, Jesse McRae, and Rick Trusant. So, we're going to come back after the break. Global News, Rodney Woods, Jesse McRae in the house today. In, in the house. I did make a little rhyme with that a little bit. You know what? Now, now be careful because, you know, we, we will no something. We, we will, no we will sing and we will rap. We no have a little bit singing. of flavor to the show every yeah, now and then. Yeah, we always have flavor. Today. You saying That's today is show. not today? Not today. Okay. Because okay. we got a guest in the house. All right. And it's a special guest. Very special. Mr. Guest. Rick Trusant. The, the, the incomparable CFO, Rick Trusant. Entrepreneur. Yes. Traveling around the world, uh, helping a lot of businesses, though, right? That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. In helping different industries. Yeah. And, and various industries, various right? Various industries, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, PN Global News, we're always trying to educate and Certainly. inspire people to, you know, get the business practice, you know, in the back mm-hmm. office straight. Right. And we're all like, man, you know, we got to get some more money. We got to do this. But we know we need somebody to help us with this. Sure. If it's not J-Mac, we need a CFO, right? Right, right. And somebody's going right. to guide us, make us do the right things, and make sure that we, we get these books shored up in the right way. That's correct. Because I mean, we got some great businesses, Rick, uh, around the country. Uh, you know, as, we, as you know, we just opened up in Indiana a couple of weeks ago. That's correct. Uh, and we're getting ready to come back this way to Texas, but we officially want to have 11 states. And I know my, my team cringes when I say it, but I really want to have 11 states online by December 31st. All right. Uh, All right. This year, 
ambitious? Yeah, very ambitious. Okay. Very aggressive. I think I fight with Jesse like every night from one, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. We fighting about all this. We, we we have we have spirited conversations. L- yes, you're refining your strategy. Well, that's, that's Jesse that. trying to refine my strategy. Yo, okay. That's what it okay. is. Okay. That's what that is. All right. <laughs> that, 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 you know, that's I an need adequate that description. Right? That, that's right. an adequate description. Right. Yes. And then we, we have our we have our you know roundabout ways about mm-hmm. doing things. But you know, more importantly, we want to. Definitely give our shouts out to our partners who are not here today. Mm. You know, Antonio Davis yes, indeed. is uh, in Atlanta. Actually, he's got a big meeting for us tomorrow in Atlanta with a group, uh, Myron and Melvin. Uh, Myron Cobb and uh, Melvin Swan. Swan. I can't think of Melvin's last name. Can you help me? I've only known him as Melvin. <laughs> Sproles, that's Sproles, what it was. That's it. it. That's it. Sproles, that's Sproles. what it was. Yeah, Sproles. Melvin. Uh, so AD has a meeting tomorrow yeah. in Atlanta with uh, Myron and Melvin, and hope that goes very well. Mm. Uh, those guys are very instrumental and really believe in what we're doing too, and they're coming on board. And uh, we've been in talks with a few of our other future investors. Nice, uh, mm-hmm. Lorena. Yeah, Lorena is out there in uh, Lorena, Detroit. Good morning, today good with morning. Toyota. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we brought on a few more partners, you know, and we're going to definitely give our shouts out to Roy Mullen and uh, Mr. Allen. They've been trying to help us. Absolutely. You know, been do very some things and, you know, keep things really moving, Rick, because this is, this is a large task, as you got a chance to see when you came back around right, to us. Right, right. It's a huge undertaking, and, and we're passionate, you know, about what we're doing and how we're trying to change the game, man, really trying to change the game. But I left off my other partners. Dame and Doc. <laughs> Doc, Dat, and Dame Dame, also Dame known as D&D. D&D Connections. Right. Oh, yes. You met those guys. I met those guys, good guys. Yep, D&D Connections. And uh, somebody, we were just talking about it. We picked up a few more um, strategic partners, too. Um, you know, Yen, Euro Yen uh, with Purvis, them out in Florida, mm-hmm. Tracy's homeboys uh, okay. out there in Florida. We've been trying to do a lot of work with them. And they're going to be doing a lot of work for us on the ground okay. uh, in, in Florida as well because we're trying to do some, uh, put some plants, some nutraceutical plants Absolutely. out right. there in Florida. Okay. So we got ambition, man. Goals. We got goals, goals, good, goals. Good. And we want every uh, MBE out there or any supplier out there in the market, you know, just keep pushing. Right. Don't give up. Don't give up on your on your passion, your dream, man. But right. you know, more importantly, we're gonna go back to this one thing that we. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Y'all all need a CFO like Rick Trueson. I'm here to preach it. I'm right. Here to preach it. Well, we do have prayer cloth moments here. Yeah, we we we, 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 we pick and choose when we have them, but we do have oh, them. Boy. We do have right. them. So so yeah. the offering trays are out. Everybody's lying by the pews. But yep. but all humor aside, to Rodney's point, uh, we have been bountifully blessed. We've had a chance to really really build some good traction yeah. in the mm-hmm. marketplace. And what it comes down to now is world class execution and the ability to fund that. Yep. Right. And so right. now it's it, it, it's a matter of you know continuing to put in. You know, those pieces that can get us uh, to a place to where we don't have to take any steps back strategically, tactically, financially, Mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that we continue to guide this process. Because as Rodney always likes to talk about, and, and, and I do subscribe to it completely, this is more than just about building out a platform to help minority business. Right. It, it has far reaching implications beyond that. Uh, most notably the job creation, and all the other socioeconomic issues that that can resolve. So Certainly. this is much bigger than the three of us. We've always said that. Yeah, uh, we, are, we, we, are, we, are, we are exceedingly pleased to have you join our team. Uh, and one of the things I would love to do for the benefit of our listeners and, and, and viewers today is, is to give you a chance to talk a little bit more about Rick. And and sort of your journey up to this point to make sure they can they yeah can we truly do know a lot about Rick too now we know a lot yeah, about yeah, Rick yeah. Trusson right, right. Well, I, I, having having said that we'll we'll leave out certain uh, <laughs> components of that journey that's uh, right it's been a good one it's been a good one paint myself in it's a been a good one <laughs> um a little bit about me I um I have my undergraduate degree is in accounting I have a master's in mm-hmm. business administration both from LSU. Go Tigers again. No, we're not going to sit here and co-sign for all that, Rick. All but right, that's I'm, okay. so, I'm sorry. Let's but that's all back. right. Let's you you, you to went to a great school. That's good. Okay. <laughs> for, after graduate school, I began my career at KPMG, one of the yeah. big – it was Big Six at back that then, mm-hmm. Big Four now. Mm-hmm. It was there at KPMG I was exposed to the um, um, accounting, finance world. I was an auditor of uh, publicly traded companies. Mm-hmm. It was there I began to interact with CFOs, COOs, and corporate controllers. Right. And um, it, it became clear to me that finance is the gap. 
finance, investing. That's kind of what is it? The catalyst, the gasoline that makes the business community yeah. Yeah. operate. Um, and you have to have knowledgeable resources in your corporation that understand that. So that, that allows you to grow. That allows mm -hmm. you to attract capital. It allows you to maintain those relationships with capital sources. So there I was exposed to accounting and finance. Mm -hmm. um, in reality, I am a CPA, but I'm really more of an entrepreneur. So I've then moved to Dallas. I was working in Houston with KPMG. I moved to Dallas and launched my own CPA firm, then my own outsourcing and consulting firm. And that did fairly well. Mm -hmm. Then I got really ambitious. <laughs> I said I was going to open a construction company. Oh, Lord. I have a, oh, I have a fairly strong right, working right, knowledge right. of the Spanish language, so I was able to interact with members of the labor force. And yeah. I used my minority business status. There you go. To, to garner. It does work sometimes. It does work. Yes, it does. It works. I yeah. didn't, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I used my minority business status to garner and attract contracts. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I really got my education in business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. I was in over my head. And I learned the hard way what it really takes to operate a business. Operate mm -hmm. a business. Yeah. Now, as painful as that experience was back then, it allows me to do what I do now, which is see around the corner, I call it. Okay. When I'm working with a company, working with a client, if I see certain steps and decisions being made that have a low probability of success, I'm able to now call them out upon that. Because, mm -hmm. see, I've made those mistakes myself. Yeah. So I already know where that decision is going to take Yeah, you. We got a whiff of that, Jesse. <laughs> yes, we, we, we got a little whiff of that because Rick called me a couple of times and he said, man, I can see around the corner. I see something. I said, no, nah, Rick, we don't cover that corner. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. So, right. So, so, so what you're saying is there's credibility with the criticism. <laughs> That's correct. Because right. I've made that mistake. Yep. And I have no qualms or issues about saying that. But I think... Um, certainly that's an added, that's an added, uh, component of what I bring to the table now, mm -hmm. in addition to someone understanding finance and accounting and the importance that's of that. So subsequent to that, I moved into, uh, interim CFO work for a small publicly traded company, uh, based here. And then after that, I, uh, most recently raised, uh, $21 million mm -hmm. out of China uh, into a private placement yep. to take managing control mm -hmm. of a, a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ, and I took over as CEO mm -hmm. of that company. Yep. Um, we followed you through that process. Yeah, you, you were, you, we tried to <laughs> yeah. work on some projects right, together right. We followed you to help, it. Sales, help with sales at right. that company. All right. Anyway, that situation was great for a while, mm -hmm. but it was um, then there were some board issues that mm -hmm. are still being worked out, but it was great experience. And for me, it's kind of, you know, full circle now. I've gone from being an uh, accountant, CFO, to CEO mm -hmm. of an organization mm -hmm. in the public space. So that's a little bit about me. That's a good track record, though. Tell you what, that's impressive. And I think what, what it does is it, it, it clearly conveys the breadth and depth of not only your experience, right. but more importantly, the, the real-time today value add. Sure, In, in, exactly. in, in, in yeah. terms of your ability to understand, dissect, and communicate mm -hmm. the pros and cons of various strategies that take a business from where they are to yes. where they want to be. Exactly. So that's excellent. That's excellent. I have a question. Yes, sir. Again, we, we always have a devil's advocate right. sort, of, okay. sort, of, sort of, <laughs> of component to the show. So, role so, play now, right? so when you take your experiences uh, when you were raising the money out of China. Sure. And you compare and contrast that to uh, – guiding a company that is looking to raise, mm -hmm. what are the two or three most important aspects for the company that is looking to raise that they should consider quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three? Because you and I both know mm -hmm. the first 90 days is where sources and uses can create some real variances in okay. what you said you were going to do and what you're actually doing. Okay. Okay. So I think your question yeah, may be two part. Yeah, it is two part question. So for any entity seeking to raise capital, to me, it starts with a solid, realistic business plan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then you have to have a budget and use of capital that mirrors that plan. Mm -hmm. 
any financing source or any investor can then look, and this is important, they can look at what you're saying, they can look at how you're allocating capital yep. that you intend to raise. Yep. And in reality, they can basically say, this person knows what they're doing, or this person doesn't. Mm -hmm. This is why it's critical for corporations to bring in, if you don't have it in-house, mm -hmm. for small to mid-sized businesses, bring in a resource that's raised money before. Mm -hmm. Someone with my background, or someone like, not saying me, of course, but I'm saying someone no, with no, my no, background. No, no, we're good, yeah, okay. absolutely. It's being able to articulate that plan in the right manner mm -hmm. to the financing sources because that develops credibility around your plan. That so, makes it easier for them to write that check right. if they feel you know what you're mm -hmm. doing. And so now you go back to being a minority business. So now mm -hmm. I'm converting back. We are a minority business, but yes. I'm converting back for the listening audience and the viewing public. So I'm business A. Mm -hmm. I know my business. Sure. You know, it's like you know how we feel strongly about our business, you know, yeah, because yeah. I know Personal. my business is what I do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Mr. Trueson, I, I mean – you're telling me I need to have A, B, C, and D, but I, I know my business. I know what I got to have. Mm -hmm. I, I know that I need to hire five more people. Sure. And you're saying, well, this business plan, you know, Rodney, doesn't reflect, mm -hmm. you know, your, your five people you need to bring on board. But I'm like, I know what I need. I know exactly what I need because if mm -hmm. I don't get these five people, it's no way I'm going to be able to take that contract from IE, Toyota, sure. or Microsoft, or Dell, or what have you. So why are you saying that I don't know my business? Right. You, you see what I'm saying? So right. that, 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 that MBE or that WBE or that LGBTQ company is saying the same thing that all of us are saying. Sure, certainly. You know, when we sit back and we look at and we put all, we put this plan right. in front of this, you know, investor or CFO and they look at you like, well, you don't know what you're talking about, you know? <laughs> but hey, anyway. Because that, 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 that was a long that scenario, was, right? That was a long scenario. You know, I'm getting ready to get into hold, this, right? Hold the place. We're going to hold that talk. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come back after the break at PN Global News. View us on www.playbookinvestorsnetwork. I'm here today with uh, my business partner, Jesse McRae, also uh, CFO and entrepreneur Rick Trusant. We'll be back after the break. Again, Global News. We're here in Dallas, Texas. Man, you know, I just thought about something, Jesse. Uh, we spent 19 weeks, I believe, 19 weeks going up and down the road in Houston. Man, 45, <laughs> burning 45 up. We were, man. I just, I just have to think about, like, man, you know, sometimes it's really nice to be home, know, be home, wake up in and, your own and come bed, to the studio here, drink your own coffee. In Dallas, well, that's you and your Folgers, Jesse. Hey, man, Folgers is, <laughs> Folgers, yeah. it does something yeah. for you. you uh, guys, I see I have Y'all both yeah. old school yeah. guys. Some, uh, you got a witness here. Uh, uh, Y'all both drink Folgers, huh? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I just got to have some tea, man. Dark roast. No, nah, I'm not doing that. Oh, that yeah. Stuff. Get you up. But no, it's, it's, it's a good feeling, man, to just get up and come to the studio here in Dallas, man. And, mm. you know, thanks to, you know, to our crew, you know, Jay and Shakita, LaRonda. Yeah, thank them so absolutely. much for They're the glue. getting up early and yes. getting this set set up for us, too, and, and making absolutely. sure everything is functional. You know, they don't, they don't hear my mouth about anything. Well, we you know what? You know what? There, 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 there's <laughs> one word that comes to mind when you describe this team. <laughs> Invaluable. Invaluable. Okay. Nice. Invaluable. 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 But, but now it's, it's like we, we bumped that road for 19 weeks, mm. man, and just, you know, 
passion, Rick, just mm-hmm. trying to educate, you know, businesses on the importance of, of having CFO, the importance of what we're getting ready to talk about a little bit more, the business plans, why do you need a business plan, and projections, you know, performers, uh, why that's important, you know, then we, we, we cover a lot of ground when it comes to business plans, succession planning, if something happens to you as a business, you know, who's mm-hmm. going to pay that money back, right? Right. Right. And how are you going to do A, B, C, and D? You know, uh, key man insurance. We talk about that a lot. Uh, Ida Financials. Now, Rick, that's in your in your wheelhouse. Certainly, certainly. You know, talking about Ida Financials. You know, why does a company need Ida Fi- true Ida Financials, not just a, a tax return or a Schedule C? Right. Or a brown bag full of receipts <laughs> and 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 and, and ten column working papers. For the time, hey, ten column working papers. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. So all these things are very important, you know, to your business. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you get a business plan, you get a succession plan, you need key man insurance or audit financials. Uh, you know, we talk about websites and apps for your business to fit on the corporate side. For they gonna pull up your information on their phone yeah, right correct. while they're sitting there talking to you. They will, and they gonna look at you, gonna view you. You know, whether you need a consultant, attorney, you know, a CPA, uh, all of those things we talk about, like, on the day to day. That's all we did for 21. Uh, we've been on the show now for 25 weeks. 25. 25 weeks. And we've just been talking about all the things that you need to have as a business to scale and grow your business and get to the next level. Because corporations today, and we all know, they're not going to just give you a contract just to give you a contract no, because no. you're a minority. Or we're African American, right? You know, and as designations now, if you are African American, you need to get your company certified with your local, you know, Minority Business Council. You know, go to your DFW Minority Business Council, or go to your council in your local states. Uh, if you're a woman-owned business, we bank. If you LGBTQ, you know, you get certified yes. LGBTQ. Uh, if you're part of the Chamber of Commerce, your business, you know, you're still trying to do business. So all of these trade organizations are relevant. You know, they're trying to help you scale and get to the next level. All we're trying to do is provide a pathway. Certainly. For certainly. businesses to really get educated, understand how to get to the next level. Because we brought a lot of investors mm. over the last, I guess, the last eight years, I would say, Jay. Yeah, about eight. About uh, eight with, real, with a lot of momentum in the last year and a half. Yeah, a lot of momentum mm. in the last year and mm-hmm. a half. Mm-hmm. Just trying to bring investors to show them that these are good, viable companies and they've been cleaned up. In order to receive capital, certainly. Because I know Rick, you you're a stickler, yeah, for looking at certain things and looking around that corner and saying, "Hey, you don't have what you need to have to get this money." Due diligence is critical. This this very critical, yeah, right? It's the, yeah. So we're going to the. I mean, we just came back from the break, and we were talking about business plans, and I gave a long example of like, you know, you can't tell me, Mr. True Son, I don't right. know my business. I really know my business, but I need two million dollars. Certainly. Now you're going to tell me why this is not working. Well, what my first question is normally, how are you going to pay the money back? Right. And then the business owner will say, oh, well, when I get this new contract, I'm going to have increased revenues. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what's your net margin? What's your margins? You pay money back out of margins. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of business owners, mm-hmm. believe it or not, they don't really understand the financial impact of that new contract how it affects their business and being able to return that capital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my question is also, if I inject this capital into your business, how does it affect your other operations? Now there could be a strain Mm -hmm. on your back office. Do you have a back office to handle this new capital? And um, increase workload. But isn't that why the new capital is being placed into me? Because I need a back office, sir? Okay. So if I put $2 million into your company, uh-huh. who's going to report to me on a timely basis? Do you have a bookkeeper? Do you we have need a to controller? hire somebody. Well, now. That's part of the money. So now. <laughs> so, all right. So here's the deal. So now that contract has just become a little less profitable. Okay. Because you now have to hire someone right, right. to report to me mm-hmm. if I'm the investor or mm-hmm. other investors. Mm-hmm. So. It's basically mapping out mm-hmm. the the impact of any material change to your business. Right. If you have a new contract, right. what are the extra resources you need? Because mm-hmm. now that chips away at the margin of that new contract. So don't tell me you can pay the $2 million back when really all you can handle is a million. And that's what a really good CFO okay. Is able to now, sit now, down now, right. and articulate to that business owner. Right. And, and the mm-hmm. viewing public and listening audience, this is this is role playing. I'm <laughs> right. you right now. I, right. I'm, I'm y'all right now right. saying, hey, I need $2 million. Sure. 
-hmm. to scale and grow this business. Sure. And, and, you know, Rick is telling me why I only need $1 million. Right. Okay. Jess, I know you had something. Well, and, and this Don't gets... Kill him, Jess. The, the, no, 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 no. Right? And, and this, yeah, this, this, I got you back. Always, always, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. We're not going to get you. Like well, you know, well, you know what? We, well, we, a, 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 a sort of a theme within Penn, mm -hmm. uh, Playbook Investors Network, yes. is that we will never, ever, ever argue over nickels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we will have spirited discussions over dollars. <laughs> Certainly. And Certainly. what you're talking about are dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So take two steps back. A million dollars. Mm -hmm. And understand that that new contract in this example was impacted. Right. Because now we know that there's going to be a hard labor cost drain. And we can track that to the pro forma and just call it SG&A. Sure. Very simple. But is that not an inherent consequence of any capital infusion? investor capital or contract that you're going to have a reduction in the net use of those funds. And here's why margin is important. And here's why I always kind of come back to EBITDA. If you have a top line contract, that's 2 million bucks. Mm -hmm. That's just 2 million hard dollars, mm -hmm. right? You can either impact that in terms of operating margin with too much hard labor cost, mm -hmm. or let's say that that contract is uh, somehow based on you partnering with another firm, which now that's a JV. We know that that eats top line up to the tune of 25 right. to 40%. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. Immediately. So, so, right, so, right. so rather than go around and, and, and reflect on the inherent consequence of contract versus uh, operating margin, talk a little bit about the importance of being able to convey as an entrepreneur the value of a specific hire mm -hmm. that does a specific thing reporting right mm -hmm. but also a tactical hire that does a specific thing such as negotiating okay right. because in my opinion the ceo the coo gets it once the money's hit mm -hmm. because they're involved with, with the the execution but the cfo see it as the, as the money's coming in so two-part question, how do you convey the importance of or the impact, if there is one, of a joint venture that affects the top line revenue, which means there's less money coming in, versus the specific hire inside that's reporting to you that affects, that affects hard labor costs okay. and, and, and what that can be and what you would look for and how to convey that because companies will have that issue one or the other. Either the top line is going to be impacted or – the operating margins are going to be impacted, and there's nothing we can do about that. Okay, so if I understand your question correctly, mm -hmm. let's go to the JV scenario. Absolutely. So it, when you, you start a company, you operate a company, and you build a company, you, you, in theory or hopefully you're playing for the long game. Absolutely. Okay, so if I have to take on a contract or a new endeavor, and I know that there's going to be a financial impact, I also have to sometimes, and these are judgment calls, yeah, which I is what I was trying to get at. There I, you yeah, go. very okay. You have to weigh out: is it in my best interest? I know my margin is going to be affected, mm -hmm. but now I have a relationship. Let's pick on Texas Instruments okay. that I didn't yeah. have before. Mm -hmm. That increases the value of my business, the business I'm building. It expands my resume. It improves my ability. It, it gives me more credibility. It gives yeah. me cachet. Right, cachet. Yeah. I like that. So your CEO, your CFO, and your COO have to sit down and decide what is our loan game? What is the loan game strategy? Because if we enter into this contract with uh, Texas Instruments. We're not going to make as much money. We're not going to make as much money. Sure. But we have now proven ourselves to another Fortune 1,000 or 500 corporation. That we can do the work. Now we're inherently maybe more valuable. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide if you can tolerate that impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. On an internal hire, so, so let's... It's almost like you get punished a little bit, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cost, you know, cost of doing business. Yeah, we, we get punished for taking some of these contracts. Right, right? yeah, okay. yeah, no, they can I be painful, you. trust me. Um, <laughs> having the right internal hire, mm -hmm. I think that what it does, it, it, it says a lot about, it, it can say a lot about your corporation. Mm -hmm in terms of this person has this background, this person has this resume, this person has done X, Y, and Z. Now that talented person or that talented resource, they work for you. It costs more, it's more expensive, mm -hmm. but it lifts 
I think, the uh, credibility of your organization. Okay. Right. So you have to think about, well, hey, I, I normally would have paid 100 grand a year for this person. I'm going to bite the bullet and pay 150. Is that extra 50 grand a year? What does that mean in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. What does that mean inherently in terms of my corporation's value? And right. that's going to be the true measure over time of the, real, time. Of, of, yeah. of the real ROI on right. that hire. On that hire. That's okay? correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And speaking of hires, uh, I mean, that's why we also have been very instrumental in looking at the staffing arms inside of the system. Absolutely. You sure. know, because we know that uh, money, uh, mm -hmm. investment dollars that are going into all of these minority businesses or, or any entity, the, the one reason they get money is for human capital, is to hire people, you know, to work in their back office. Uh, even if you're buying equipment, mm -hmm. you know, there's still got to be an operator of that equipment, of that you equipment. know, as we have our operators of the equipment that's producing the show. Mm -hmm. So we got to pay that operator, right? Correct. So at the end of the day, you know, and I think sometimes we might get this kind of twisted and why we really need money. Mm hmm but well, we really need money for human capital or equipment. Right. I mean, like, is there anything else that we can think of that we really need the money for? Well, um, when you when you look at it, I think from that f reference or that framework, mm -hmm. I think you're probably 99.9% .9 <laughs> accurate. Give me that percent where I lose, where I that, lose. That, that, that one tenth <laughs> of a percent, percent uh -huh. that you may be off, you know, we may look at media by, uh, social media campaigns, yeah, yeah. but then you could say, "Well, I still have to allocate I a, still a human hire resource to right. go do that." Right. So that's why I'm just. So saying. I'm 100 percent right. Well, 99.9. 99.9. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 and, 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 the, and and these are the nickels that we won't argue. We about. won't argue about. Okay. That. You know, I but will you're not yeah. argue about the nickels. Really. Yeah. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's Certainly. like we think about those things and we talk about this internal all the time with the team. Hmm. This money from investors is for human capital right you know uh, or a person who's operating the equipment certainly so we're going to sit back and pause on that a little bit jesse we're going to put a pen in it put a pen in this part mm -hmm. out slow we'll okay put a pen i like in. that and we're going to come back after the break i'm rodney woods of playbook investors network pen global news my partner jesse mac ray that would be me and cfo yes rick true so we'll be back after the break all right Rodney Woods, Jesse McRae, Rick Trusant. Now, Rodney, I've been I've been jumping at the bit. We we we, we you know I I realize we're not going to sing. I I, I I know that that off the dome rapping is not going to happen. Not going to happen. But there is one segment to our show that I, I think that the the subscribers like and that they want. We always get the jingle in the website. We haven't even conveyed the website the whole show. Well, last time we did that, we messed up. Oh, I, I stole your thunder. You stole my thunder. <laughs> you stole my thunder. It was intent. It was not intent. I mean, I, there's never any malice intended, but it still happened. It did happen. It really did. Can, can we can we convey the website? I don't know, Jay. Come Why on, don't man. you just go and give it to him? Tell you what. Okay, so, 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 www. Dot. <laughs> Got to emphasize the dot. The dot. <laughs> Playbook Investors with an S. With an S. Network. Dot com. See, Jesse is so elegant there. Yeah, he, he, he is he, very he, smooth. He, he's he's our, our prayer cloth person. He's our pastor. 
Right, you know, right. You know, bishop. Right. He's a COO and everything. Okay, man. Else. I'm right. just trying to, you know, I, I, I just look for career and acting. Yeah. I, 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 I look for ways to make a contribution. You do. Okay. Yeah. okay. Renaissance man. <laughs> That's Jesse. <laughs> but T-Mac. oh, 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 oh T Mac. I just, I just thought about because he just hit me on uh, uh, what do you call it, WeChat. Oh, WeChat. So Mac, hey man, be careful. I know you and uh, H out there in China. Uh, I sent you guys pictures of Tracy oh, yeah. and uh, H in China. They're in China right now okay. uh, promoting some uh, stuff for Adidas. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing a lot back, a lot more work with Adidas here soon when Tracy gets back to the States. Yep. But T-Mac, shout out to you, bro. Shout out, brother. Safe travels. Enjoy yourself while you're there. But, uh, yeah. yeah, do your thing. You know, I, I didn't really give a uh, shout out to Jesse who came to visit us today. Jesse Vaughn was here in the studio. Okay. Jesse's a good friend uh, of ours, and he also worked with me back in the day. He's mm. in Jones, so we're going to have Jesse on the show at some point. Uh, you know, as we go through our weeks, we're going to have uh, Jesse really talk about, yep. you know, the business of Edward Jones because that's, that's a viable business to a lot of small businesses. Right, absolutely. As well, so, you know, shouts out to Jesse and shouts out to Tamika. Tamika's in Detroit, and I didn't get a chance to shout out to her, so hope you're having a great day, and we'll talk soon. She's doing something on the uh, – on the etiquette side. Okay. You know, teaching businesses about proper etiquette. Mm. It's pretty interesting, right? Well, you know, it's, it's this thing about, um, you know, being able to conduct oneself yeah. and maintain decorum. Yeah. And, um, you know, that certainly has a place. I think when you get money, you better have some etiquette sometimes. You way. better have yeah, it. Yeah, trust me, it's we wise. We might need to push this. I think we're going to transition a lot of that over to a lot of our athletic entertainers and others, uh, you know, consumers. So sure. Etiquette is important. You sure. You know how to conduct how to act, how to carry yourself, and also how to speak. Uh, we, we should know how to do those things. So, uh, shouts out to you, Tamika. But, Rick, let's go back to where we were. Yes. So, you know, we, 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 we talked about the impact of the top line revenue. Mm-hmm. We know that anytime you get a joint venture partner, while it's necessary, it impacts what you bring in. Yeah. And sometimes you do take contracts if nothing else, to lend credibility to your presence in the marketplace. Right. Because if you didn't have the capabilities, you wouldn't be there. Right. Uh, so it's what we call the cost of doing business. And then there's that internal hire. Certainly. Uh, that is going to have an impact both from a hard labor cost perspective. But the hope is, over time, mm-hmm. uh, that you will realize the value in terms of the efficiency and the consistency. And then whether or not that can continue to be leveraged yes. as you get more of those contracts. Because then at that point, you can back into ROI. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're all chasing. ROI. Right. Remember, Jess, we break things down on the show. ROI. Return on investment. Okay. Yeah. Now. See, me and Jesse go through this quite a bit. Jesse used acronyms. I'm like, Jesse, we got a listening audience. Right, and right. And a viewing public. We always have to break down what we're speaking about. Yes, sir. ROI, Jesse. Return on investment, Rodney. <laughs> we got to get these things out. Have we run through EBITDA? We yeah, know we got we, that we down. Did, uh, we did uh, EBITDA, uh, EBITDA yeah. two weeks ago. A couple, couple of weeks ago. And we, we did it early in the show. Certainly. Uh, we, we talked about EBITDA, but if you want to expound on it, absolutely more than welcome to. We're trying to make sure that everybody who listens or view us, they understand exactly what's really going on. Sure, of course. Because we didn't know. Right, we did. Well, let me not put that on you or Jesse. Y'all, know, y'all both come from finance. I didn't know all this stuff, mm-hmm. you know, nine, ten years ago when we was trying to when I was building businesses and had them on our business. Just didn't understand it. But it's important yeah. because you, that these are the terms you use to communicate to um, the the, uh, the business public. Yeah. Yeah. Your results, where you are as a yeah. company, yeah. what your and you know expectations are. It's. It's paramount. You have yeah, to know these, you have to know this terminology. But at the end of the day, as a minority business, you're always sitting back trying to think about how can I, mm-hmm. as a business, gain access to capital. Right. And that was the reason we really built Pen Playbook Investors Network, because the challenge was is tough. It is. It's tough as a minority business trying to gain access to, and not just because of ethnicity. It's just because. If you don't really know your business, mm-hmm. you know your business, but you don't know the right things to have in right. order to sit this in front of an investor who would say, he or she would say, wow, I want to invest in this company. Correct. I, I see me getting a return on my investment and taking this company to another level. Right. You know, whether it be an equity play, whether it be a debt play, whatever. And the reason, you know, Jesse and the team and all of us 
put a lot of relationship managers in the port, as we've mm -hmm. talked about with you, Rick, right? It's because we want to protect the actual vendors who are looking for capital, but we also want to protect the investors too, right? To make sure they get returns on the investment. There's no coupon payments missed, milestone right. things that, right. that was supposed to happen didn't happen, so that there's somebody to 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 mitigate the risk and the loss of any money or losing a company. Correct. That's very important. That's right? very important. It's that constant communication. Constant communication. So Jesse is always driving on that too. Yeah, and he's, he's right. Always driving on and, that. And you know, I, I think one of the important points to make sure that we capture, especially now we have you know, a real CFO that, that's at the table, talk through, since we've talked through revenue, we've talked through EBITDA, We've talked through labor costs and how that flows through to operating margins. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything left being net income or free cash flow or pure profits. But let's talk about, let's go back one more step to that debt side mm -hmm. or the equity side, okay. also known as the capital raise. Right. Because there is this wonderful little term that we all like to speak to on the balance sheet, especially whether we're looking at a cap table or not. It's called enterprise value. Okay. Can you speak to the impact of the capital infusion as equity to that, the debt capital infusion, both of those impacts to enterprise, enterprise value, because one entails a coupon, one could entail a priority payment on free cash flow. Yeah, maybe so so, as, a, so as, as a CFO, convey the importance of considering those two things as an entrepreneur is going out to, to get that next raise, because we understand the, the importance of the capital, but we've got to understand the impact to both the balance sheet and, and the pro forma as the investors look at how they get that money back. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the debt the side. The side. Debt side okay. first as it relates to your question. And I'll try to explain this. And if my acronyms are off, you get it. make me explain. I'm going to get you. Make, go yeah. get You got to yeah. get me. I'm get you. All right. <laughs> One of the – man, it, it, it's, a, it's a very critical question – but it's a critical decision for a corporation. You have to determine where you are as an entity and the timing of your business in terms of its growth cycle and what you're looking to achieve. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to lever up and increase enterprise value with debt. You can go out and acquire other businesses. Mm -hmm. You can acquire other, other assets, bring those into your corporation, so now your critical mass or your footprint has expanded. Mm -hmm. Okay. But. But. I, I knew it was a right, go, go ahead, jump in. Go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew so, it was so, 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 that we don't, so that we don't get off track because we also know that when you do that, mm -hmm. you run the risk of, again, having to look out over time and see whether or not uh, the, 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 the sum of the parts was greater than the sum of the whole or if the part was greater than the sum of the whole. In other words, the company right. that you acquired actually had the real value That's or, true. or, mm -hmm. or. You you've aligned yourself with the company, and now you actually worth less because because, <laughs> because, because you took on a company that ha that had they were a wash in equipment mm -hmm. that can no longer be collateral, ca collateralized. Correct. And now they've levered up one point six or maybe even two times, and now that has been morphed over into your own balance yeah, sheet. But, not, but but that's an important consider. That's the but. That's the but. So speak that's to that, and then, and, then, and then come back to what you're saying about the debt. Because if you go and acquire a company with assets, we know that you're also going to acquire some debt in most You bring cases. in debt. All right. So to me, it, it, it boils down, and it, this, is, this part is very critical. Yep. It's the due diligence, mm -hmm. your plan, and what you're trying to achieve. Okay. We keep coming back to that, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Due diligence. Due diligence, your plan, and what, what the ultimate goal is. Um, I've seen corporations go out. Um, bring in debt, acquire other businesses, and they've been really smart. They build up the revenue, mm -hmm. they cut back office calls, they create economies of scale, so, and then they sell. So they manufactured internal margins. But we, we talk about this yes. quite a bit, though. Right. Yes. But, you know, and the, and the, and the <laughs> part of it is that right. we do expound this quite a bit, Rick, and in this space, in the, in the minority business space, you have a lot of companies who want to do that, but don't really know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And most minority businesses that build a business don't build a business to sell it. Correct. So that those are challenges and things that we also expound on to let companies know the importance 
of exiting your business and selling and going public. Exactly. So we'll, we'll get into that, you know, probably after break, we'll definitely get into that. But we know that that's, that's an issue. It is. It's an issue. But like, like I'm saying, and I'm quite sure Jesse would back me up on it, that most minority businesses just don't build a business to sell it. Not at all. There's no, there's, there's a lack of a um, transition plan, a lack of exit strategy, and that needs to be addressed. But that's a great opportunity mm -hmm. in the minority business space, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Whomever can address that, 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 that issue or that gap, he or she or that group can bring a lot of value to the, to, to the business community. Okay. When you, to me, when you look at minority business space, look at, let's say, going to China or Central America to capitalize on an opportunity mm -hmm. or South America. Why do that when we have that here in America? We have a marketplace that is somewhat separated from capital sources. Mm -hmm. there's a, there's, maybe there's a knowledge gap, but it's a captive market with value that can be properly exploited and value can be extracted and value can be exchanged to those business owners if if someone or if we somehow or if you via pin mm -hmm. can create and help with that with, with those exit strategies and and affect those exits mm -hmm. it's a it's a big opportunity yeah and we we've looked at that and we had to, you know, be forthright and I'm thinking too and, and look mm -hmm. forward and ahead. We partnered with uh, a company, Versailles, mm -hmm. uh, former astronaut and partner, uh, Bernard Harris, yeah. uh, former astronaut out of uh, Houston, Texas, but he's, you know, as I said, he's a former astronaut. But Bernard and his team, June Lu and them, had a great business in China. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we had created was a, a cross borders program. Right. So what that means, we were trying to help businesses in China and Asia, it, just period in general, in Asia, when they transition to the States, mm -hmm. we wanted to actually cross promote them into minority businesses here on the ground so that there'd be an opportunity to cross board, promote them over in Asia with these businesses. Man. So we, we, we yeah. did think about all this stuff. We, and like I said, we put a lot of thoughts, a lot of time in all this and you know, now we're here, and we're glad we're having you mm -hmm. uh, as a CFO to, to help us, you know, get this thing really right and, and very tight. But uh, more importantly, you, you're right. So we thought about those things. Now we're just trying to implement those things so that, you know, the listening public, the viewing audience will understand how, if they decide mm -hmm. to go that, right, that route, then there'll be an opportunity for them to do so. Yeah, without a doubt. Right. Without a so doubt. we're going to come back, you know, J-Mac, after the break. Uh, we're here at Penn Global News uh, on Thursday morning, here every Thursday from 10 a.m. to noon. High noon. High noon. High noon. <laughs> we were hoping it was really sunny today. But oh, man, it's overcast. <laughs> but you know what? Okay. We, we, we're going to make it bright anyway. We're going to make it bright. So we're going to come back after the break. Rick Trusant, Rodney Woods, and Jesse McRae. Locked in. All right, we're back at PN Global News. Rodney Woods, Jesse McRae, and Rick Trusant. Um, Man, we're having great conversations, man. This time is uh, flying by, so we've got to keep on 
pushing this information sure. out to the listening public and the viewing audience. So we want to make sure that there's a, some great takeaways. Yeah, right? hopefully so. And yeah. we were talking about, you know, the connectivity between, you know, domestic and international markets. Certainly, mm -hmm. you know, certainly. Uh, and the exit strategy that most minority businesses just don't have. Correct. You know, so. Big opportunity. I mean, yeah, well, it's a big opportunity, but if they don't know, we have to educate. We, sure. It is sure. an educate. educate. It is a process. Right. It is a process. And that, and that word keeps coming. That word's been around now for, for 25 weeks. Process. Process. If you, process. If, you go back, if you go back and look at any of the archive shows, we've mm -hmm. talked about that. Now, in a slightly different context. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but process is one of those terms that, is, that transcends the subject. Yeah. Here, we're talking about the process of raising capital. Correct. And the two types of capital structures uh, that 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 process will entail, either equity capital mm -hmm. or debt. So I think that where we're going to pick this up is is talking about the debt side. Correct. Uh, and 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 let's just talk about it, not from a from a exit strategy standpoint, but from the standpoint of, of leveraging that capital. But the impact of that debt infusion, getting the coupon payment back. How are we utilizing those monies? And maybe some of the triggers to where we can pay that down. So, Jay, so just for the listening, you know, uh, public and the viewing audience, break down debt because I want to make sure that everybody understands what debt really is, too. And, you know, and, and coupon, uh, coupon payments. I don't want somebody to think that they can go get a newspaper and give right. you a coupon. Not, not yeah. those type yeah. of coupons. Yeah, yeah. Un yeah. Unfortunately, so, it's a little more. <laughs> Right. Complicated. So between that. the both of y'all, I know we have the answer, but sure. break down the, the debt for, you know, the listing audience. Yeah. Debt is what you borrow. Right. And what from you an investor, what, what, bank. What you borrow, period. Let's just say what you borrow from anyone outside yourself. Right. Okay. okay. Then you might say, what do you mean borrow from yourself? Well, you can create two types of accounts. You can make a loan to yourself as just an entrepreneur. Sure. Sure. And, and, yeah. and, and that, that's an accounting exercise, yeah. and we won't get into that. Yeah. But, but generally speaking... Debt represents a sum of monies mm -hmm. that were outside your capacity that you went and borrowed for a negotiated rate of interest for a finite period of time. Right. So so I, it's I what you money. Are. So, Jess, I want to borrow $2 million from you. I'm going to pay you back, though, next month. <laughs> Now we're getting into ambitions <laughs> yeah, versus amb being versus being delusional. Right, okay. Ambition. And <laughs> hey, listen, that's my part. I was supposed to be able to say that then, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, Rick, break down. The coupon payments, you know, from businesses like ourselves, we have a coupon payment that needs to come back to you as an investor. Certainly. What does that mean? Essentially, it's it's my stated interest rate on the uh, principal balance of a loan or okay. debt instrument. So if it's 8%, you borrow a million dollars. That's, what, 80000 a year in interest. right. And you can maybe, let's say it's quarterly, then that means you pay me 20000 every quarter. And, and a portion of that, since we're going to compound it quarterly. Yeah. Same well, amount, same amount yeah, of money. Yeah, goes to principal. Right. Goes well. to principal. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you could have a, a balloon payment. So you could have a debt instrument where it's interest only. And then at the end of a stated you got period, a big payment. you have a big payment. Coming back. Okay. So, I mean, and we're just, you know, we, like I said, we play devil's advocate sure. a lot. We try to make sure that, you know, the, the viewing audience, the listening public really understands what it means. Because it's, it's not an embarrassment. If you just don't know, you don't know. You just don't know. So we're just trying to make sure that people know Certainly. exactly Certainly. what it is. Because, I mean, a lot of, and, and especially, let's go back to the minority business space, it's typically always going to be debt. Mm -hmm. It's not more private equity money because they don't want somebody else in their business to own the business, right? Correct. So private equity dollars is like, okay, well, now I'm going to put $2 million of PE money in your business. I want 25. No, let's take it back. Two million, so I want 52% of your business. Well, we can't have that in the MBE space. And why is that? Then we lose our minority business. There status. you go. So we'll be diluted down from the 51% owner operator of a minority business. Right. So, I mean, these things are so important. They're so important for people to know. And this is why we're here every week talking about these things so that people get a, a understanding, it's just a clear understanding certainly, certainly. of why you don't want to dilute your company down. Mm -hmm. Because if you dilute down and you now lost your minority status, you might lose that $10 million contract that you're working for one major corporation or, exactly. or tier one supplier. Exactly. Which I always say, the tier one supplier that's working for these major corporations is bigger than the actual corporation. No, no, go ahead. No, yeah. good. So, so we consider the debt, uh, Rick, in your experience. Mm -hmm. 
how important is it to look quantitatively and say, if I'm going to raise a million dollars, what is that as a multiple of my historical revenue Mm -hmm. versus my projected revenue? Okay. So what, what essentially I would, I would advise to me, it's critical the use of funds. When you borrow that money, you've now added another cost to your operation. Those funds have to go into profitable, with margin, revenue generating mm-hmm. areas. areas. Mm-hmm. Don't borrow the money if it's not going to generate revenue. Now, with you margin, say, with margin. Now, when with you margin. say now, when you say that, because mm-hmm. again, this gets into the age old mm-hmm. uh, conversation, right? About ambition versus capability. Are you talking based on historical performance? Or in the case of a mature of a mature startup, maybe someone that's pre-revenue. Right. Yeah, let's let's do the pre-rev. Let's okay. do the, 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 pre-rev. the pre-revenue. Right. Right. That, so. that that now 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 they've laid out now now they've laid out a conservative revenue projection, reasonably conservative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A an aggressive cost structure, reasonably aggressive. And now they're getting at a graduated, relative, improving EBITDA performance schedule. Mm-hmm. Okay. So once you take that money in, how important is it to show as they are progressing through that projected year for those Certainly. periods mm-hmm. that there's an allocation for debt service? Correct. That there's an allocation and an accretive flow yes. to net income. Exactly. How important is that? It should be the basis and the driver of the decision. Mm. It, it's everything. It's the genesis. It's the catalyst behind making the decision. There has to be an increase in net profit. There has to be, um, as you said, an allocation for debt service. Um, otherwise, you're going to have problems. And now you're going to have to raise more capital or make other go back for another, capital go, go back for another round. So, so you, 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 so the investor is going to look at that and, and, and make a reasonably quick determination that all they'll be doing is funding a stagnant enterprise at best. Correct. Okay. Correct. Got it. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's a great question too, Jesse, because, you know, we too have gone through these type of exercises. Oh yeah. Investors. Oh yeah. Um, and, and I think what, Fear factors, a lot of times, uh, even with minor business, you see not so much projected revenue come in right away, but then you see a spike. Yes. That scares a lot of investors. Like, wait a minute, you went from this, but I, you would think they'd be happy, right? Right. <laughs> but, you know, let's, let's play devil's advocate again. It's still projections. Mm-hmm. So if you know your business and you work and operate in this business, you have projected numbers that most investors want to see. They want to see. So how do you determine that these projection numbers are not good? Well, for, as an investor, right? Okay. So that's, that's always a frustrating thing. Well, you want to see these things, right? No, no, I agree. And, and, and this will get back to how important is okay. it to look at that debt raise as right. a multiple of those projections. Of those projections. Right. So for me, the way I look at it, and it has been my experience, first thing, well, not the first thing, but assumptions. Mm -hmm. You have to have reasonable, logical assumptions that when I take in this new capital, here are the factors, assumptions, Mm -hmm. that drive this revenue Revenue. increase, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. increase in profit. Mm -hmm. An experienced investor is going to look at those assumptions, and he or she can tell the likelihood, or determine the likelihood maybe, of potential success, Mm -hmm. okay? So those assumptions are critical in the process. I agree. Is it also safe to say that as an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. and and an MBE business or a business period, when you put these numbers or projected numbers in front of investors, is it safe to say that you should be putting these numbers in front of investors who understand your business or ones who do not understand your business? Well, there's a saying out in the capital <laughs> raising world. There's sophisticated capital, then there's unsophisticated okay. capital. All right. Unsophisticated mm-hmm. capital tends to come from friends and family. 
There you go. They believe in Uh-oh, you. Uh-oh, we got some prayer cloth moments coming, Jess. All right. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and let's, let, let's embellish that a little bit. Let's, okay. let's, let's, not, right. let's not say unsophisticated. Let's say less Less sophisticated. sophisticated. There we go. We don't want to insult anybody. Right. No, 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 no. We're no, not here to no. do that. But well, and unsub- I was referring to myself. <laughs> uh, no one out in TV or internet land. I'm talking about me. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, and and we play devil's advocate about that because a lot of businesses and why we built Pen, you know, and we line it up from industry by mm-hmm. industry by industry because of one investor to understand the industry that they were trying to invest into. Certainly, good idea, yeah. very good so point. Because a lot of investors who mm-hmm. have liquidity and you know, uh, money sitting on the sidelines not making any money for them too. Right. So we went out and we met with all these investors like, oh my God, we got so much money, mm-hmm. we can't find enough businesses to invest this money to, to deploy this money to. But you gotta line it up. Correct. So that there's no misunderstanding of the business. Because a lot of investors hadn't seen a lot of these businesses. Without a doubt, especially in the MBA, MBE space. Yeah, which is which still is, industry specific to companies, though. Exactly. It's really no different. It's no different than, than the S&P. Yeah, it's no different than the S&P. Right. It's smaller. No, smaller. But same industry. But easier to work with. Easier to work with. Easier to work wow. with. Wow. Tell you, man. Okay. So, um, what I found from my experience, <clears throat> so your point is, is a very good one. Most successful high net worth individuals, they've made their money understanding one industry. And then they continue to invest in what they know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why it's critical to line up these corporations with the criteria of the investors. It's a it's a more seam more seamless process. Seamless process. But we also seen a a change. Okay. And and a change and and I'm not speaking from an investor standpoint because I'm Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to play you guys, but just being on the ground and talking to a lot of investors and how we brought in a lot of investors to to pin the playbook investors network Mm -hmm. we've seen a big change from the hedge fund world okay now into the family office world Mm -hmm. yes where investors in the family office they're looking to diversify money and invest in more things than what they typically traditionally okay used to invest into yeah you're correct you're 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 absolutely you gave me a correct you are absolutely well, correct. <laughs> we, we have it. Right on here. It's, it's on record. Yeah. It's on record right now. All right. So I, I'm going to listen. I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a break on that one because. Okay. Okay. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, hey that's it. Get, get out while you're ahead. I'm going to get bro. out while I'm ahead. So we're going to come back with Rodney Woods, Jesse McRae, and Rick Trusson after the break. back pn global news rodney woods jesse mcgray coming to you live and direct <laughs> at rick true side <laughs> i'm just here you just <laughs> am i live and direct also you're live and direct i'm brother. live and direct you're live well, and direct you more rick direct than live live and direct wow. first time <laughs> no we man first we, time. We, i know we took a break because i, I won rick gave me a big credit yes. a big kudos yeah. so i was like okay let's take a break well but, learned by the way <laughs> So we're back at PN Global News, but, you know, talking about, you know, minority businesses and, and investors, you know, now that uh, a lot of hedge funds in, in the marketplace are going away, mm-hmm. uh, but family offices are popping up everywhere, all over the country, and they're trying to deploy capital. Without a doubt. 
into businesses and get great returns, you know, get great returns on their money. So now we look at more of a lot of family offices are diversifying their portfolios. Yes. And they're willing to look in other industries that they possibly never actually invested into before. That's correct. They're looking for a return. They're open. They're flexible. Mm-hmm. Open-minded investors now. It's been, a tr- it's been a change lately. I've seen this maybe over the last year of my, um, you know, my career. Yeah. Family offices have um, substantial amounts of capital to, to deploy, and they are aggressive. Yeah. It's a big opportunity for the yeah, MPE space. Yeah, it really is. I, yeah. It really is. So, and we've connected mm-hmm. you know, with a lot of family offices, and, and Jesse's been spearheading a lot of that. Great. But, you know, we have understood that they want to diversify their portfolios. Yeah, without and, a doubt. you know, this MBE space is, is wide open. It's, mm-hmm. It has to be cleaned up to a point, uh, making them understand that, you know, taking this capital, you've you got to fiduciary responsibility to return this money. To return. And, and grow this business. That's right. No, very much so. And, and, and I keep, you know, coming back to the question, because when an investor looks at, at how they're going to deploy that capital to you, whether it be debt or equity, uh, it represents a multiple of your revenue, right. or you can say it represents a multiple of your EBITDA. Sure. Uh, but but let's say you have a company that's doing a million bucks, mm-hmm. and they borrow three million bucks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Three times the multiple. Right. Let's say they're doing five hundred thousand in mm-hmm. revenue. They borrow a million, two times multiple. Correct. Is there a conventional wisdom or barrier to where they should likely, based on the revenue, actually borrow more money. Okay. If they can convey not only in the sources and uses of how that money is going to be used, but project the pure profits or resulting ROI. Correct. Beyond just the coupon payment for that capital, is is there a baseline barrier for that? Well, when you say baseline, are you t- talking in terms of like maybe a metric? The metric, yeah. The specific, metric. yeah. Well, in all fairness, uh, Jesse, I didn't really do my homework for that kind, that type of question. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll allow Jesse to get yeah, some yeah, questions. Yeah, you, you, you boys didn't properly prepare. Me. Well, here's the it, it, no, but but that wasn't that wasn't a gotcha question uh, yeah. but because because to your credit as a CFO, because you are charged, you are mm-hmm. tasked with looking at impacts. Certainly, we know that there's an inherent mathematical effect right. to anything that comes in. And I guess what I'm looking at is, is if I'm a uh, entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I'm doing half million, a million bucks in right. top line revenue. At a minimum, it looks like to me that my multiple should never be below 1.0. If I'm making a million in top line rev, why would I borrow 500,000? Right, right. I understand the question. So we, you, any entity or any business, um, when you take in capital, um, debt or equity, you have to be able to calculate the one, once you calculate revenues, profits, free cash flow, mm-hmm. EBITDA, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, what becomes your enterprise value? That's it. So, what happens is when you bring in this capital, what is right. the resulting effect upon the value of your business? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, to the point about enterprise value, we, right. we know that that is just a mathematical discipline, right? Because we know that if paid in capital is a million. Mm-hmm. And somebody gives you uh, another, you know, uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars mm-hmm. for ten percent of your company. Right now, enterprise value goes up two point five. Correct. But yet you only have paid in capital of a million. Correct. You can't monetize that. Right. Not not in the same way. No. So so the enterprise value, not to harp on it too long, understand so, so that it's it's a quantitative can't, effect. Why can't you monetize? It? You're privately. You're held. privately held. So you're not going to be able, not going to be able to go in. You no, can't take that and kill the coupon. I got that. I got that. I got that. I got that. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, right. yeah. But, why but, can't you monetize on that? But then that's why I wanted to, to convey that question to you, Rick. Okay. Yeah. So you can't monetize immediately because you're privately held. Yep. Then your shares are private. There's not an open market for it. No that liquidity. You, that, no that liquidity. You go out that you can go out. So if I enter into a, into another private transaction with you, for example, and sell another 10% of my business, and maybe I step it up. Mm-hmm. Well, now I've increased the value of my business, but my shares are still illiquid, mm-hmm. not tradable because we're privately held. So is there a situation where you have, which the MBE market is 90% privately held anyway? Correct. Mm-hmm. So is there any way to increase 
the evaluation of a lot of these companies, even though they're privately held, is really... Well, I believe Rick's just described that. I mean, it, the thing is, the, the money that you raise, what, what really drives enterprise value, simplistically speaking, is the percentage. Yes. Correct. I mean, that's, I mean that's, just, gotcha. that's just a matter of hitting enter. Right. It's an <laughs> algebra form. It's algebra form. Yeah. So, so I didn't now, take algebra, guys. Come on, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I forgot. It, so man, algebra? Really? Yeah, I forgot. It's it, like L and I was in practice? Yeah, practice. Go algebra? Practice. Algebra? <laughs> Oh, dude. I got it. I got it. But, 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 but the, 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 the question, because again, this has to be considered, is now you've raised this debt, which has an impact to enterprise value. It's got a coupon payment associated with it. Correct. You've made an allocation for that. And now you're at the precipice of making a strategic decision as to whether or not you're going to make an acquisition with that capital. Correct. Or if you're going to make an investment and, and allow your business to continue to be more organic. Organic growth. Okay. Right. Uh, regardless, though, that debt represents um, some multiple of your historical top line revenue or yeah. EBITDA. Yeah. But it also represents an immediate obligation of that concern. That's correct. Okay. Immediate. So at, as, as a CFO, now that we've gone through and understood the mathematical impact, what is the primary concern what should the primary concern be for that ceo as it relates to when to begin to be aggressive in the pay down of that obligation all right so jesse what tends to happen there are going to be um market conditions you have to look at mm -hmm. there are operational uh what ifs to try to succinctly answer your question i go day one because before we borrow the money, we must have a plan. So my plan, my use of funds. So we're going back to our business plan, our projections, our performer. Correct. Exactly. And our use okay. of funds. Yes. If we've done our homework and, mm -hmm. done, and, and, and if we've done our homework and planned properly, we immediately begin to deploy those funds in the right areas mm -hmm. that should produce the desired results. Mm -hmm. And then at that juncture, it's a matter of review of, of view, reviewing operations and making course changes yeah. along De the way. Determining those variances to right. see where we need to, to remedy some off issues. While we're yep. On. yep. Well, Jess, I tell you, I, I hope Wesley's watching the show today because it, we're answering all these questions right now. Oh, now. yes. Yes, so, yes, Wesley. You know, we definitely I hope Wesley's watching our show okay. today in okay. Florida. He, <laughs> he and Brandon and, 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 and our other partner, uh, Purvis. I hope you guys are watching the show. But that's the difference when a lot of us mm -hmm. as, as as minority businesses really don't truly understand right and, and it's it's a it's a real critical pain point because you really have great businesses out here without a doubt that are trying to scale and trying to grow their business but you know more importantly also creating that huge growth uh creation that we need to create in every market right so you know now the questions the q a and and the critical questions that, that J Mac always ask is we're just trying to get definitive answers. Sure. So that they'll think about things differently. Okay. You know, they'll go through things differently. And also you you really want to get educated and understand you need to visit us and go in to www.playbookinvestors with an S network dot com. Yes, you have to pay your initial fee for you after you do your own assessment of your company, then we come in to go through all those steps, you know, from your business planning, your also PPMs. Correct. Because uh, there's a private placement memorandum that some investors like yourself yep. or others may want to see. Uh, your succession planning, your key man insurance, uh, back to your audit financials, to your social media, your marketing, your advertising, your PR, or your websites or your apps, or just having a consultant, you know, outside of our relationship manager to make sure that you do all the necessary things you need to do in order Correct. to gain access to that capital. Correct. You know, and then we have, you know, we'll be bringing more and more people on the show about public markets. And I think, Rick, you want to expound on some of that later on as we get down the line Certainly. and talk about the yeah. public markets. And, you know, if you choose to bring in some people who specialize in public markets and going public, we, we honor that as well. So these are the things mm -hmm. that drive us on the day to day. To continue to talk about this every week, week in, week out. You know what we do in the portal, 
what we do with our own peers, what we do with our athlete entertainer uh, peers and, and partners. You know, we're trying to educate that we now can own a lot of things, you know, in sure. our own backyards once we understand the, the true formula. Exactly. You know, to, to understand what does it take for us to get to the next level and also present a, a, a appealing case to any investor. You know, I don't think it has anything to do with race now. It's about business. It's about business. It's yeah. about being informed. Yes, absolutely. Yes. You know, how do you scale? How do you grow the business? How do you present a, a great business plan? Because mm -hmm. you've been in business 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Right. I think, Jesse, we were out in uh, Indiana. You know, we had, you know, people stand up and say, hey, I've been in business for 20 plus years and could get no capital. And we too, we know this ourselves very well too. So let's not play. Right. We also got a lot of investors on the outside to invest in these businesses because they never seen it. They like, oh my God, especially family offices. I want to diversify my portfolio. But more importantly, even us mm -hmm. raising money because we did something, we built something to help, and it, it not, we know point blank, it's not about us. Right. But it was tough for us to raise money. Without a doubt. You know, so we had to continue to, well, Jesse had to continue to. You know, do things that was requested of us, you know, to show uh, an investor. Correct. You know, so it's tough. But, you know, you got to persevere and keep pushing through this because it's a bigger calling out there for right. us to, to put this on the ground and put it in front of businesses, any business, anywhere, in all 50 states as well as international. And that's why we created an international platform called Cross Boards with Bernard mm -hmm. Harris and his team. Because this stuff is going to change the game. Without a doubt. Internationally. Yeah, it's going to change Without the game. Without a doubt. Yeah. You know, so, you know, Rick, let's, let's kind of, you know, kind of recap. Okay. You know, for, uh, for a few minutes if we can, Jesse, mm. because one of the most important things in having a CFO in your business is to help you, one, understand you got to get a business plan first. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back through those steps. What does it really take for a business to be able to present his or her plan to an investor to get investment dollars? Right, right. Well, certainly I think it begins with that business plan. Mm -hmm. a, a, a very critical component of that plan. I like SWOT analysis. Mm, okay. Let's break that acronym down. Yep, let's do the SWOT. Right. So strength, weaknesses, weaknesses opportunities, opportunities, and, and threats. threats. You have well, to these take boys got it down. <laughs> that, now that sounds like a little rap song right there. SWAT. Hold on, yes. we're gonna hold Strength. that SWAT analysis yeah, until we come back, because that SWAT analysis will be talked about when we come back after the break. Yes, sir. So you have myself, Rodney Woods. You have Rick Trusant mm -hmm. and Jesse McRae. We'll be back after the break. back pn global news swat analysis we are back in the house with jesse mac ray and rick true son rick you're originally from louisiana too right from a town natchitoches louisiana natchitoches town i could town never natchitoches. remember where rick was from i knew he was from i knew you were from louisiana that's correct i couldn't remember what city though right the boot yeah the boot. Louis louisiana <laughs> natchitoches louisiana the oldest city in the louisiana purchase really first, really first city Incorporated or designated oh, wow. in Louisiana. Yeah. Huh. 
Talk, 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 talk about a historical nugget. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask you this. Largest population. Mm-hmm. No, no, it, for, for, for your, your home, no, your hometown. What, what, was, what was the largest the population was for your hometown? I would imagine maybe, maybe 30,000. Okay. Oh, wow. And that okay. would have been just recent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, growing up, I think it was 20, hmm. 21. Yeah. Thousand. Wow. I, I just I knew you were from Louisiana. I just can't remember what right, city. You right. know, I know where Jesse's from in Arkansas. Yeah. Hey, the Pine Bluff. Pine, Pine Bluff. Bluff. Proud. <laughs> just get it right. The just Port right. City. Okay. Do, do not get it twisted. So we all represent a different state. <laughs> Arkansas, Louisiana, and Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee. SEC. All right. <laughs> but uh no man, so let's go back, man, to the SWOT analysis. All right. So for me it's critical. Or I would like to make sure every entrepreneur understands this is critical. Make an honest assessment of where you are as an entity, a business, and a management team. Okay. Your SWOT analysis. What are you good at? Your strengths. Mm -hmm. What are your weaknesses? What are you not so good at? Mm -hmm. What do you need to beef up? Mm -hmm. Your opportunities. What's out there in front of me if I address my weaknesses? Mm-hmm. And then last threats. What are the threats to my business? So a, a threat could be lack of capital, which is a major mitigant. Which is it, a threat of every business. Every business. <laughs> you should have known. I, I think Joe might like what I just said, right? Hey man, it's a threat. Yeah. So Joe, we're making this. We're gonna simplify this thing. Yeah. It's a threat to our business. It's a threat to your business. Capital. <laughs> capital. A weakness. Maybe you don't have the right personnel. Right. 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 Strength. You may be a subject matter expert in your industry. Right. And then an opportunity is these new contracts with a Fortune 500 corporation if I address these weaknesses and threats. So you basically start uh, there. You're doing your self assessment of yourself. Yeah. Uh, start there. Strength. But, okay, so let's go back to the devil advocate side. Okay. As an MBE, mm-hmm. I, I don't think from a pride standpoint we understand what our strengths, we know our strengths. But you're not going to expound on your weakness because you don't really know if you're really weak. Okay. You, you follow okay. what I'm saying? You don't know if you're really weak because you're like, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I'm growing this business. I got a new contract, i.e. with, you know, Amazon or Toyota, and, and I'm growing this business. I, I don't have any weakness. I just need capital. Well, right now I would respond in That's this. That's my threat. Weakness, I, capital. I, I, I respond in this fashion. Okay. Once upon a time, I went to get fitted for a suit. Okay. And I told the uh, gentleman working there, I said, hey, I'm a size 40 waist. He what was that? Me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's good. I like that. It's coming, I, it's I coming back. Drink, you know, you to basketball it's coming me. back. The 40 waist is coming back. <laughs> Sorry, Rick. I'm no, no, well, no, you know, no, you know, no. you, hey, okay. you know, you know, you know what they say. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first. I'm going back to 40. All waist. right. All right. I apologize. No, 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 no. That's a good one. I like that. So he takes out the tape measure, and he does the thing around my waist. And okay. he's like, Mr. Tucson, you're not a 40-inch waist anymore. <laughs> right. No matter what you think, your waist is now 42 inches. Right. So okay. my point is this. You have to be completely honest with yourself. Right. Yeah, and I agree. And, and, I agree. and, the, and the way to do that I is agree. if you say you only need capital, well, compare yourself to other organizations. Mm-hmm. And maybe they've received capital, maybe they haven't. But you have to really determine, this is where I am, and there are other entities in this space. They're outpacing me. Why? Why are they doing better? And then I think that'll help you drive and determine mm-hmm. what the weaknesses are. I agree. Because you have to be completely honest. I, I you totally do agree. have weaknesses. But I, I still think that, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I would probably think that probably 80 85% of Minority businesses, a woman owned, a government, or LGBT, mm-hmm. or just majority companies that are just small to medium sized businesses are going to say their, their weaknesses is, is, is capital. It's capital. It's capital. Um, I got a great business. You mm-hmm. know, I know what I'm doing. I know how to do it. I know how to get it done. I know how to be efficient. I just can't get capital. That's well, what you're going to hear a lot of businesses really say. So l- l- let me, let me, sure, throw this sure, out sure, sure. of course. So in my life or in my career, excuse me, of raising capital, and pe- I've heard that, com- that statement made, mm-hmm. well, another weakness you may actually have is personnel, human capital. You don't have the right person in your business 
to but attract the camera. You know we do play devil's advocate, and Jesse knows it very well. So you're right, uh, Mr. Trusan. I don't have the right people in my business, but I need capital to get mm -hmm. the right people in my business. Right. That's what every that's what every business is going to continue to say. So one again, so one service or one resource that's mm -hmm. out there, right. fractional CFOs. Fractional. So let's break that down. Fractional. Fractional. So, so let's say, for example, my my full time rate is fifteen thousand per month as a finance professional. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't pay me fifteen thousand per month right now. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. I can't pay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We got you though, right? Well, you, now, so yeah, okay. yeah. I'm working. I'm working for equity. Don't tell everybody we've been on fifteen thousand a month. <laughs> I'm working though, for right? equity, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what happens is... That's on Jesse's responsibility. Yeah, well, Jesse and I, you will negotiate. You will work that out. You see him smiling. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, like, I'm chomping at the bit. I'm I like, won't. I didn't know that, Jesse. Hey, because you, you know that question was coming. <laughs> like, man, I need to see the books now. Yeah. No, 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 all human now, side. Go ahead. see LeRon and Shaquille look up, and I was like, okay, 15000 a month? Really? <laughs> but not good, I'm sorry. All right. So maybe you can't pay them 15000 okay. per month. But maybe you can, you know, um, engage 10 hours of my time per week. Mm -hmm. Now I'm fractionally available like to you. Like the fractional jets. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got you. Exactly. I got you. So you can access that resource, um, you know, within your budget, and you can have that um, individual, that, that in, you know, interim CFO, that fractional CFO, mm -hmm. go out prepare your plan, shop that plan, and communicate with potential investors. So I think, I think we're about to coin the phrase intellectual timeshare. <laughs> wow. wow. Joe, I did not do that. Jesse did that. So uh, I want Joe to know this. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, we're, we're, we're renting your discipline. We're renting your skill set. Yeah. That's correct. For a specific period. Right. And timeshare vernacular is going to be for a season. Exactly. So we're going to get you for the first week, the first three business days, of the first season of making sure we can pay our bills. Right. On time. On time. Okay. So with that fractional share, mm -hmm. what should be the reasonable expectation of us for you? And what should be the reasonable expectation of you for us? Because we're talking about not being able to get all of your time because we can't afford it. Correct. But we clearly need some of your time. We need your fractional time. <laughs> well, right, right, right. We need your, by at the way. Whole, at a whole rate. Right, yeah, we need your fractional time, but also the, the, the viewing public is like, okay, man, how can I pay him $15,000 a month? But I know somebody who can. He says to tell you hello. Okay. CJ Kumo. He says, hello, Rick. You, CJ, really? <laughs> he can pay you. <laughs> tell CJ I said hello. I need, I I need to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what happens, Jesse, it's standard in my engagement letter. I have to have access to all personnel in terms of my expectations, all personnel, all books and records. Um, I think what happens a lot of times in these engagements, you may engage more of my time up front in terms of expectations. That's why I phrased it the way I did. You yep. want more of my time up front yep. so we can lay out objectives mm -hmm. and what's critical for, you know, to be a, what, what, what needs to be accomplished. So if we're raising capital for your organization, mm -hmm. you say, okay, well, Rick, tell us what you need. Well, we're going to put together the plan. I need the pitch deck. I need the collateral pieces. And I need to be able to clearly, clearly articulate your mission and your vision. Mm -hmm. And I would then go out and sit with 10, depending upon our capital needs. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Sit with right, 10 to 20 right. investors. Mm -hmm. And my generally we'll get, bring in one or two, and we'll get one to close. Mm -hmm. So businesses primarily, and I know we have, you know, mm -hmm. business plans, we have projected numbers in the plan, or we have a PPM, but are uh, you saying that most businesses now that are raising capital need a pitch deck as well? Without a doubt. Okay. I think you need, I think it needs so to So I, I think we need to expound on that though a little bit more. Why does a company need a pitch deck to pitch to investors? People are busy. People don't always want to read a PPM or a 30 page business plan. Mm -hmm. A lot of investors, again, if we're dealing with very experienced, sophisticated investors, mm -hmm. they want a pitch deck mm -hmm. and they want an executive summary. Mm -hmm. They have experience. Right. They can go through that and determine if there's a, you know, further interest. At that juncture, they can maybe access or review a business plan. Mm -hmm. So you, I think it's critical you give the information to investors in a uh, friendly, um, quick format okay. that they can digest the information. 
And, and the reason we just wanted to expound on that, Rick, because uh, a lot of businesses won't understand why they need to pitch that. Mm-hmm. You know, I got my business plan. I'm operating every day. I've been in business 10, 15 years. I, I've given you all my numbers, but the investors say, hey, I would like to see a pitch deck. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Right, Jay? I concur. <laughs> so, so we're talking about, you know, what this business person needs in order to mm-hmm. be in front of an investor. Um, and and I, I still go back to 80, 85 percent of, of minority businesses. Their weaknesses is going to be just I can't gain access to capital. Correct. Nor can I get capital. Uh, you can't walk into the bank and get capital. You can't go to an investor. And most of the MBEs don't even know who the investing public is. Correct. Yeah, that's right. So that's that absolutely right. Uh, and that's why we built Penn the way we did, because we tried to cover every gamut. Mm-hmm. from an investment standpoint, from, you know, the PE side, the private equity side, the mm-hmm. VC side, venture capital, which is most of your startups, but also looking outside that door, looking into the banks mm-hmm. who have the CDFI money that we've mm-hmm. been engaged with, mm-hmm. with, you know, Fifth Third Bank and other banks that have to deploy capital right. through the CDFI fund to get their CRA credits, uh, also looking at the micro lending side, you mm-hmm. know, from d- traditional um Banks out there looking to do that alternative financing. Right. We look at every financing arm you think of. Okay. Okay. Because, as you said, capital is going to vary in different ways for every business. It's going to be a different way of getting capital. Exactly. You know. So we we we've actually gone through the process ourselves to even look at the micro lending side, mm-hmm. the alternative financing side to understand exactly what that really meant. What that actually means. Yeah. What yeah. that really meant, so that we would be able to, you know have a definitive answer for, you know, for businesses who were saying, hey, I need X. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it, they only need that 600000 Right. You know, and they got receivables up to a certain amount that they can go deploy that $600,000 and pay it back. And pay it back, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, you know, a, a, a key takeaway from all of our shows, especially the past few weeks, is to understand that there is not only an institutional interest Mm -hmm. in investing in minority business in certain pillars of of the marketplace Mm -hmm. there is a growing institutional commitment to investing in the minority space i.e your fortune 500 corporations your multinational corporations uh, your institutions such as the family offices Mm -hmm. Uh, but the one that i think is is particularly critical at a national regional and local level that we'll talk about after the break is going to be these banks and the CDFI. Yes, CDFI. because 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 that that is grassroots, and I want to make sure we touch on that before uh, before we end the show today, we and should. that we get get Rick's input on that. So take us out of the break, Jesse. Tell you what, Penn Global News, Jesse McRae. I've had a chance to kind of spend some time with these two guys here. We're going to come back. You know who they are. I won't reintroduce them. We'll be back <laughs> in about twenty seconds. Welcome back. Welcome back, Pan Global News. Uh, Jesse McRae with my partner, Rodney Woods, and the incomparable Rick Toussaint. 
I know that I took the liberty of not reintroducing them at the break. I was just getting ready to say so. You know, I'm gonna I know you was. I had I had to just go ahead and jump inside. Yeah, I I had I had to jump right in front of that. You know, we always add an element of humor to the broadcast, and then that that was my element. Thank you, thank you. But certainly, you know, it's been a great show. Remember that you can always find us at www.playbookinvestorswithansnetwork.com. Again, Jesse McRae, and you know, one of the things that we were talking about right at the break was the growing institutional commitment Mm -hmm. to minority business. And I mentioned at at a local level the financial institutions, i.e. the banks, Mm -hmm. that that have earmarked funds specifically for this kind of initiative. And, you know, Rick, with you being a CFO, uh, you have seen a plethora of opportunities. Certainly. uh, That have been created. Mm-hmm. out of a concept that some of them have to go through a legislative process yes. to, to materialize, right, also right, known as a state bill. Yep. Um, and, but, but it becomes a sweeter endeavor when it is something, when it's an endeavor or an initiative that's born out of more of the private sector. Mm-hmm. And we talk about the banks. The, what's been in the press, everyone knows, is that you know, some, some large institutions who will go unnamed on this broadcast in this segment that, that have a real commitment to the community, community development uh, finance initiative. Uh, there's a CRA credit that can be checked off because okay. there's a spin count associated with that. But what it rep- represents is an institutional commitment to fund minority businesses because they, they want to make sure that they convey the message that they're investing in the communities that they serve i.e. that they sell to. So as a CFO, when you are looking at a a company that comes to you and says, look, I have a chance to take advantage of some of these initiatives. There could be contracts. I need this capital to buy plant and people to to run the plant, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. buy equipment and people to run the equipment. Right, correct. How important is it for you to not only understand the implications of that kind of opportunity, but to walk them through how to articulate that in their executive summary throughout their their business plan, but also to to put it in the form of that elevator pitch? Because at some point they've got to engage that investor to get that money. So, So how do you speak to those different kinds of initiatives and guide that CEO to having the confidence and the acumen to convey how their business will benefit from that and how that investor will get that return on that investment. Well, I think it, for me, when I'm giving that advice, it always starts with maybe setting the tone or the atmosphere to that CEO or that business owner saying, listen, you're going to educate maybe an investor or a third party on these opportunities mm. and this business space and this financing tool they mm-hmm. may know nothing of. So you have to educate, inform, and then create a comfort zone and maybe a framework for dialogue and communication with that potential investor. Because, again, that investor knows their space. They know what they know. Intimately well. And most investors have made money in one industry. But now they want to diversify. Deal. But now they want to diversify. Now they want to diversify. And, 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 and so they have to grow comfortable exactly. with the concept mm-hmm. of diversification and the real world opportunity that could represent that, and and and, and, and you know, f- remuneration, financial remuneration mm. that could actually bring them. Mm-hmm. So it's an education process. It, it it's more than just an elevator pitch. I think the the MBA MBE space um, allows for it is an education for many investors. And, and you still have to do that. You know, you have to educate the investor public own minority businesses all the time you know because even when we were going around jesse uh meeting with other investors uh especially when we got with um iib iib um our investor uh investment bankers platform they had about fifty thousand fifty independent bankers yeah. with over ten thousand institutional investors but uh, out of that ten thousand institutional investors a lot of them were like what is a minority business what is that know. yeah what is that right you know and, yeah. and it's you, you were like really but I have to also look back at myself when I first got certified as a minor business. I didn't know what that was myself. Mm-hmm. I knew what affirmative action was. But not I knew that business. what my NAACP card was. But right? not that business But I didn't know what minority business was. I'm like, well, why are we mm-hmm. minority business? Okay, yes, I'm African American. Absolutely. Well, you got to get certified as a minority business. So you have to go to your, you know, your local council and get certified. So you do go through an education process. 
of making investors understand what a minority business is. It's just a designation. Correct. You know, for uh, 446 major corporations in the United States is saying, hey, I believe in diversity and inclusion. Correct. I believe in, you know, minority, African American, Hispanic, Asian, Pacific Islander, woman owned businesses, LGBTQ. I believe in that because these are people buying our products and services. Right. So we got a 10% spend that we're giving back to the market. To that marketplace. To that marketplace, right. So if that's 10% and you're spending $17.5 billion a year with your, your vendors and 1.7 of that is spent in minority businesses, mm -hmm. that's the 10% of spend what they're looking to do. That's what they're looking to do. So account. you gotta be a qualified business in order to get that money or get that contract. And if it's a $200 million or $2 million contract or $100 million contract and you don't have the ability to scale, right? it's just gonna mess up everything anyway. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's a process. Rick, we have definitely, man, definitely, definitely enjoyed, you know, you on the show today. Thank you. It's you been know, tremendous. It's right. been tremendous. To, to expound on, you know, why businesses as a whole need a CFO for one. C certainly. You know, we also learned something today about, you know, hey, let's use fractional CFOs. Correct. You know, which is another business vertical, but we'll talk about that later because we read right. that already. Right, right. We can discuss that later. <laughs> I think we talked about this already yeah. before. Yeah. But, you know, more important is just making sure that every week that we come to this show, uh, Penn Global News, and expound on different topics of, from your business plans to your, to your CFO, your COO, your CEOs, and, and even some CEOs are not the best for the business. Sometimes you have to tell them that maybe you should be the chairman of the board. Exactly. That happens. That, that happens that does happen. It's, and it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard, you know, ask of somebody who built a business to step aside and let us help you grow and scale this business. Exactly. It's tough. It's a tough thing. But every week, we want to continue to come with more and more, you know, educational, more ideas, more thoughts, create, you know, more conversation with other MBEs around the country or, or woman-owned business or government, LGBT, or just majority business. And also... Uh, you know, to bridge that gap between the corporate and, and minority businesses and bridge that gap between the investing public and businesses. Right. So these are the things that, you know, we, we're passionate about, the things we fight for, like, every day. Uh, we also have our own quest at helping, you know, athletic entertainers to understand how they can actually own some businesses. We had a little saying back in the day going to Houston every day. Everything that's built... These microphones that you and I are talking mm -hmm. on and Jesse talking on today. Somebody built that. Somebody built it. That's Somebody right. made it. You know, the lights is right here. The stage is right here. The, the, the production crew behind us right now. Somebody made these things. Yeah. And a lot of us are making these things. But we need to own certain things. We need to own manufacturing plants in our own backyard so that we can do what? Create jobs. Create jobs. So these are the things that, Rick, we do on a day-to-day. -day. And I know you know what we do. Uh, you've been around us for a long time. We've actually done things in the past and, and now you are fractional CFO. CFO fractional right? CFO. But let me right. make sure, let me tell the public. Figuratively at, and literally. Yeah, well, not at 15000 a month. Not at 15000 a month. <laughs> I'm right. going to make sure I say that. Yeah. They think on we record. got some money. Yeah, on record. And, no, and, and I've already said, we're still raising money ourselves. Right. We're broke. <laughs> but that's a joke. No, it's not a joke. That's for real. So, but, but honestly, I mean, we're just trying to make sure we continue to educate. Continue to drive and get people inspired, okay, I want to get my mm -hmm. business right. If you're going to do it, do it right. Let's get it right. Let's own businesses. Let's own manufacturing plants. Let's create jobs. Those are the things that we're here for. You know, Jesse, I know you have some things you want to expound on prior to leaving the show today. No, no, I, I think it's been a fantastic show. You know, Rick, again, it, it's been um, really, really good to have you on the show. Yeah, uh, you, you, great you, to see you. You brought so much credibility to, to what it is that we continue to do. And, you know, just remember that you can always go to the website, www.playbookinvestorswithansnetwork.com. You can find us on any social media platform that you have. Chances are we are on it. But uh, <laughs> all humor aside, it's been a pleasure. Uh, myself, you, Rodney Woods, my partner, and uh, Rick Toussaint coming back into the fold. This is going to be a good thing. It, it's this journey. Right. Is going to be a good thing yeah. because we're doing the right thing at the right time for the right reasons. Yeah. And so I'll end with that. Rick, do you want to leave the, the viewing public and the listening audience with anything? Anything they need to do, leave them with something so that they can have some takeaway. You know, for me, I th maybe one of the best piece, 
pieces of advice I can give small uh, and medium minority business sized business owners. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. And please begin to educate yourselves on raising capital and exit strategies. You need to build a business that can be sold. You need to prepare from day one to build a business that you can ultimately sell. Doesn't that sound like a show we had early on, the difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur? Right. We had wow. a show on the difference wow. between a business owner mm -hmm. and an entrepreneur. Um, we had that show, uh, golly, it's been maybe six, seven, six months eight. ago. Yeah, something like that. So, we, we like I say, we try to tackle every topic right. that a lot of people are not going to really discuss or talk about. You know, we're not pointing fingers at, at any business owner, any corporation, any investor, any athlete, entertainer. We're just here to say, hey, here's an opportunity for you if you're a business, a minority business, woman-owned government, LGBT, or, or majority business that's, you know, small to medium. Right. If you're looking to gain access to capital, you need to come see us, www.playbookinvestorswithansnetwork.com. Or look at the show, PN Global News, every Thursday from 10 to, to noon, every Thursday. High noon. <laughs> Just high noon. High noon. But, you know, it, it's, it's passion, it's drive, and it's want to make change to in, in the right way. Correct. You know, I, I, I joke a lot. I, I tease. I, I think I teased President 45 a couple of times like, hey, we really going to make America great for real. Mm -hmm. You know, we really have a, an opportunity to do so. And, it, and it's about everybody. It's not about just one individual person. Or it's not about T-Mac or Antonio or Jesse or myself or Rick or the team. It's about everybody. Everybody. So these are the things that we, we keep driving, you know, on every day, Monday through Sunday, but uh, important on Thursday. Then we get on the show and we just do our thing. And this is, this is for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's for the, it's for the public. It's it's not just for us, but it's it's for people to understand that you know here's a group that's really trying to help you get to the next level. Correct. You know, so because it's time out for apathy. It's time it for is. action. It is. It's time to yep. make change. And and uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm really getting younger. I'm Benjamin Button going backwards in age. Well, so I, I feel good. Lucky you. Lucky you. <laughs> I feel good. So I, and I'm still hooping, Rick. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're 20 pounds from now, I'll, I'll come and see you on the court. Come on with it, man. Hope, hope springs eternal, brother. All right. I'm going to show you all something. <laughs> but for the viewing public and the listening audience, definitely always thank you for, you know, tuning in, listening, or viewing us. Uh, go out and see us, www.playbookinvestorsnetwork.com. See us on all the social media, Facebook, playbookinvestorsnetwork.com. Uh, you, you can, like Jesse said, you can pretty much see us on any social media platform. Uh, thanks to our team, you know, Shaquille, LaRonda, uh, Jay, uh, thank Indeed. you guys so much every week uh, for putting the show on. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe. Joe's probably in commerce, Texas Commerce somewhere today doing his thing, but our social media team, uh, Camilla, she's uh, married now. Okay, okay. <laughs> so thank you so much. But we'll see you back next week, uh, Thursday, from 10 a.m. to high noon. 12 p.m. 12 p.m. <laughs> Every Thursday is Penn Global News. I'm Rodney Woods, my partner Jesse Mike Ray, our CFO, Rick Trusan. Thank you. Be well. <laughs>